Hi folks, welcome to the channel. It's been a while since I've uh, updated uh, or produced any videos. Uh, I've been talking about neutral current recently um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to uh, maybe get this up on the channel for students to discuss uh, the importance of uh, balancing three phase loads to minimise currents in the neutral uh, and to actually discuss what neutral is. So in this short video we're going to look at obviously three phase currents, we're going to look at a single phase installation and to demonstrate that neutral very much is a live conductor. We'll go through a worked example, um, we'll talk about uh, obviously a balanced three phase supply and why on a balanced three phase supply the neutral current will be zero and then we will also look at a uh, unbalanced three-phase supply. So if we go back to actually measuring neutral current. So in order to measure neutral current we use what we uh, call in the trade as a clamp meter or those you know, as a tongue tester. Basically it's a clip-on ammeter or works like a current transformer and basically what it does is we clip it round a single conductor. It's got to be it's got to be just the one conductor. We can't go through live and neutral, so it's got to be one conductor. The magnetic field from that conductor effectively uh, forms a magnetic circuit in the ring. So there's an iron ring in the uh, clamp meter, which in turn causes the magnetic flux to flow in that ring and induce a very small current uh, in the uh, meter itself. So you can get AC and DC clamp meters, so they're good for solar voltage, uh, really good fault finding tool as well. Uh, and obviously with the new amendment to wiring regulations of the 18th edition, there's a, they talk now of measuring neutral diversion currents. In other words, putting a clamp meter on the earthing conductor to see if there's any currents flowing through the earth. Um, so th many uses for a clamp meter, get yourself bought, one bought, a uh, fundamental fault finding tool. So back on topic then, if we look at a three phase, typical three phase star system, so this represents a transformer system, so we can see star connected transformer, uh, the actual zero centre part of the star is picked up from the earth potential of zero volts so effectively if that was not there if that zero volts was not there then there is risk that these three phases we wouldn't get the stable 230 volts between line neutral or certainly uh, the phase voltage without that center ground into zero so the earth reference or the tn reference in this case terra neutral is a very important connection in the transformer because that's actually giving us our earth reference as zero volts and in fact it's actually creating our neutral path now just a couple of myths before we start off i get some students who say that no current flows in the neutral well this is incorrect um, if you look at model a at the moment obviously we have our supply our live through our transformer through our fuse through our load um, and then back on our neutral so yeah there would be no voltage across that cable in, in as, as it forms at the moment because it's it's obviously a closed neutral however if we open circuit that neutral then there is a 230 volt potential now what you need to remember is this is an ac system so the current is actually going back and forth so it's coming basically in and out of the live and neutral so it's coming out on the live on one cycle and then it's coming out on the neutral on the other cycle and vice versa so we really do need to treat the neutrals as very much being alive so if you're ever working on an electrical system in a live state which you really shouldn't be um, be aware certainly on lighting circuits that if you start open circuit in neutrals you are very much exposing yourself to uh, mains potential 230 volts and I am speaking from experience so uh, yeah be very careful there so lock it off let's be safe let's do things properly okay then so back to our <clears throat> our uh, staff bit, bit of a croaky voice today guys so uh, please excuse me so if all of these loads so if we were to pull uh, I, I L one so we've got the line current one line current two line current three if they're all exactly the same 
then there would be nothing, no neutral currently would be zero amps in the neutral. And if you had installations where they are motors, so electrical three phase machines generally are balanced, electrical heating, three phase heaters like three phase immersion heaters, uh, water heaters, that kind of thing, get commercial ovens which are a three phase, they're generally balanced, so you wouldn't really get a great deal of neutral current. However, if it's on a like a distribution system for a building, uh, it may be that um, if we take a three-story building, if each floor of that building was on a different uh, line, the top floor residents are all at work, the middle floor residents basically, you know, they're in, the ground floor residents are all taking a shower, then effectively you're going to get a difference in balance. Um, so the currents will be out of balance, which is unavoidable so you're bound to get some currents flowing in the neutral so on a distribution network it's very difficult to get zero neutral currents however in electrical design we can um, basically select circuits and arrange circuits in such a way to keep those neutral currents quite low and I'll explain why that's important later now if we look at the three-phase supply, we know that uh, in a three-phase supply, uh, a three-phase alternator produces three alternating currents at 120 degrees apart. Um, now, obviously, the voltage magnitude would be round about the same. However, the current magnitude would differ depending on the load. So, basically, what I've drawn here is we've got three balanced load, uh, sorry, three balanced line currents of five amps each. Um, one centimeter at one amp. So I've drawn this to scale on the computer, and you can see there we'll start off with L1, so five divisions or five centimeters, five amps. Then we've gone 120 degrees with a protractor, and we've drawn uh, the other phaser, a magnitude of five amps at 120 displacement. L3 is another 120 displacement, so that's 240 from L1, which is giving us five amps. And basically what we do is we add all these together. Now, effectively what we do is we draw an equilateral triangle. So rather than keep it at 120, if we keep it obviously within a let's say 180, we can see there that if we add L1 to L2 to L3, we get a perfect equilateral triangle and all the phases basically meet. In other words, they're all touching. So the resultant current is zero. So that means that in the very centre there, uh, that we're pulling 5 amps from our supply. So each of one of these currents is equal. Therefore, we get 0 amps in the neutral. But what happens then um, if we get uh, a scenario where they're out of phase? Oh, sorry, not out of phase, they're out of balance. So if you look at uh, an unbalanced 3-phase supply, so this time we've got L1 at 60. L2 at 45 and L3 at 20. Determine the neutral current using a scalar phaser or by, and by calculation, sorry. So we'll start off with the, the phaser first. So the first, the first uh, line current, L1, 60 amps, so six centimeters. So we draw six centimeters. Um, we'll start off here and effectively six centimeters, which takes us obviously to the end here. We then add L2 at 60 degrees. So there's our 60 degree angle. Uh, and L L2 is four centimeters, that's obviously 40 amps. Um, and then at the end of L2, we will add L3, which is two centimeters, so that's obviously 20 amps at 60 degrees to there. And you'll see that the phase stops short. So the distance from the end of L3 back to the start to L1 is the actual current that would be left in the neutral. So we measure that to scale on our scale ruler. Sorry, not on our scale ruler, it's a normal ruler very carefully. Obviously, the bigger the drawing, the more accurate the, um, the you know your result will be. So in this case, I got 3.5 centimeters, which is 35 amps neutral current. Okay, so L1. 60 l245 l320 we're getting 35 amps in the neutral which doesn't sound a lot 
but obviously this is only a small supply when you get onto an industrial scale then there is a real risk that we could actually overload the neutral in other words that that neutral conductor could become overloaded and if we lose the neutral conductor it burns out then we'll no longer get that 230 volt reference um, between live and neutral or phase and neutral which is very very important and then a lot of damage would be done so we can also work this out using the calculation so basically the formula um, is it looks quite daunting it's actually quite straightforward so we get the we get the uh, line currents there we square them add them together square them up and then we take away the product between each line um, and we square root the the total uh, answer to that and that gives us in this case we can see so 60 squared plus 45 squared plus 20 squared minus 60 times 45 so that's uh, l1 times l2 uh, l2 times l3 and l1 times l3 work out the, uh, the the totals for each in the brackets so don't try not to push it all into your calculator because you might make a mistake and we get 35 amps so obviously the calculation method is much better uh, well it's more accurate than obviously a drawing but the drawing does work as well so let's look at another example then so in this case we've got uh, buzz bars we've got L1 18 L2 at 40 L3 at 60 again I could draw a spacer but the easiest thing to do here is to do it mathematically so let's just see if I can remember that formula this is what you've got to remember because the thing uh, here is in your examination uh, you're bound to get a neutral current formula and I do know that at the moment this is popular certainly with City and Gills whoops we've gone we jump to screen okay so this time it's IL1 times IL2 minus IL2 times IL3 and last but not least IL1 slide that over times so that's the formula which we need to remember for that all important exam so what we do, write the formula down, get a map for that formula in an exam, and just simply drop in the values. So IL1 we have as 18, IL2 40, IL3 60. Drop that into the formula, let's work that out. So drop the numbers in, and we get IN as 36.39 amps in neutral okay so that's quite a straightforward example so the key to this is to remember the formula okay so just to summarize then the advantages of balancing line currents in a three-phase uh, installation or network basically if we keep all the currents roughly the same across each line then that will avoid current flowing in the neutral uh, often is the case uh, with certain uh, installations with three phase boards uh, L1 line or the brown uh, brown line or brown phase depending on which generation you are um, effectively is used you know that's the, the default uh, line that everybody goes to uh, so if everybody used L1 then that would cause a problem obviously on the network because L1 would become overloaded um, imagine like the generators as well on the supply so imagine the generator is like a washing machine an alternator uh, when a washing machine is balanced so if you were to put uh, three equal bricks so if you were to displace three equal bricks in a washing machine at 120 degrees when that machine is spinning it will be nice and stable like a wheel out of balance you know wheel balancing however if you were to put one sole brick in a washing machine just on its own then it would jump around like crazy that's actually what alternators do on a generator so if you actually hear a generator running when there's an excessive 
uh, draw just on one of the lines in the alternator, you can actually hear the thing making a bit of a racket. Um, so effectively advantages then, we get smaller cable sizes. So imagine if you had a 90 amp load, uh, 90 amps over three phases is 30 amps a line. So you're gonna get, uh, you could use potentially a smaller cable size. You're gonna get less volt drop. Remember volt drop is created by current. The more current that flows in a cable, uh, effectively the more volt drop there is in that cable. So if we can reduce the current in, uh, in, in within the cable in uh, of an installation network, then we can also uh, remove the volt drop, which again means we can use smaller cable sizes. Um, balancing phases, we get less neutral current, so we don't want we want those neutrals to keep nice and cool. We don't want to unnecessarily overload them. I have seen installations where neutrals have burnt out because of loose connections, uh, and that is effectively. Um, and that's caused a lot of damage to the equipment that's on the mains because if the neutral goes then what will happen is, is on a three phase network the currents will back three from one line to another line via the neutral so you'll start to get 400 volts uh, on your equipment that's connected which is disastrous really you'll destroy all the equipment um, also balancing the phases reduces the risk of overloading so we can keep again reduce the current uh, and also, if you were to put your lights and your power over three phases, if for whatever reason you were to lose a line or a phase, um, then effectively what that would mean is that the other two would, would keep on, so you wouldn't get all the lights going out, etc. So the bottom line is keep your loads as balanced the best you can. Don't forget to test your neutrals uh, during your continuity testing. Uh, in the guidance notes three, uh, the neutrals often get neglected on new installations uh, on initial verification. I think it's important that we actually test uh, the continuity of, uh, of the neutrals as well to make sure that all those connections are nice and tight. Remember that the neutral is a live conductor as well. Um, yes, it, it forms no part of the ADS uh, shock protection circuit. However, for normal running, uh, neutral, loose neutrals can cause, uh, obviously, overloading as well. So, okay. Hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Please uh, click the like and subscribe button. Um, thanks again for watching. See you next time.